Welcome back. Moving forward in this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate the use of the pen tools, the pencil tool, and of course certain shapes as well using Figma desktop. You could do this Figma online or desktop, same thing, uh, just whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm going to use Figma desktop, and here you see on your screen, I already have some vector shapes drawn, right, using the pen tool. So let me in fact uh, get rid of this. We're going to start from scratch, right? So I'm going to demonstrate how you can actually do it. So on our toolbar, notice there's a tool called Shapes tool and then the Pen tool. So in this lesson, I'm going to focus on these two tools. So once you practice on these, and I'm going to assign some homework as well, you get comfortable with this. So by the time we actually start with our app design, you should be pretty comfortable with all of these tools. And I'm going to demonstrate some shortcuts as well. So make sure you practice on that as well. All right, so let's first begin some basic shapes. So within the shape tools, I can either draw a rectangle, line, arrow, ellipse, polygon, star, or I can insert an image as well. So fairly straightforward. So I'm going to run through this quickly. So rectangle tool, you can simply drag and drop a rectangle, whatever size you choose. You can specify the width, height, the x coordinates, y, and then the angles here as well. So notice if I hover over the tool or the actual rectangle four dots appear in the corner right so this is the radius of this rectangle in other words well it's not a circle yet but what i could do is i could hold my mouse button down and round off the corners by dragging inwards i can give a radius of 33 or whatever number i choose and if you notice on the right side, it says 34. So I could either specify a number here, let's say 31, and it will change the radius here. So for instance, if I need to create a button, right, for my app, I need to custom design my own buttons or if it's a requirement from the customer, this is the way you would do it. So I would draw a rectangle shape, give it a radius, let's say about radius of Five, zero. And then once I have the radius, I'm going to insert an image. So simply go up to your tool, place image. I'm going to select this background and create the image. Next, I want text. So I'm going to say click here. Again, this is just an example, right? So I'm quickly running through the rectangle tool and creating a button. So once I specify click here, maybe I want to make this a little smaller. And notice if I make this smaller, it do, does not adjust, right? So a shortcut and a quick tip is to hold the shift key down. That way you can maintain the proportion of the button, right? So if I don't hold the shift key down, notice I can even make the button vertical. But as soon as I hold the shift key button, button down, it reverts back to the actual place. So I'm going to make the size 230 by 92. And then click here, same thing. I'm gonna hold the shift key down and then center it. Perfect. Next, you can of course play with the rest of the areas like stroke and whatnot. So for example, with the text, I can change the font type to whichever you want. I could also do the bold or the pen stroke 24 and so on, right? So these are the areas that you can actually take a look at, change the color and give it some effects. For example, a drop shadow for your text, or if you like a layer blur, inner shadow, background blur, you could do so as well. So you can play with these, and this is your homework for this. All right, so perfect. So this is how you would actually end up with a rectangle and then create a button by working with the radius. On the left navigation, notice within my layers, I have two layers, well, the click here, text, and then the rectangle. What I could do is I could group these together so that they stick together. Otherwise, if I move the button, the text does not move, right? Let me do a control Z. So in order to group these, fairly straightforward, just highlight the entire button. The shortcut is to right click and then group selection. Or you can use your keyboard and do control G to group. And this way it'll create a group for me. So I can call this button group by simply going up to my layer and rename the layer as well, okay? So some quick and handy things. So if I click on the arrow here, it uncollapses and shows me that there are two objects part of this group, okay?
Okay, so this is an excellent way where you can manage your app because these layers can become hundreds and hundreds, right? It can reach up to hundreds of layers by the time you're done with your app, depending on the complexity of the app. So this is a good way to actually organize right from scratch. Perfect. Similarly, I would like you to actually explore other tools as well. So using the same concept, same shortcuts, you can insert line, arrow tool, and as a homework, this is what you're going to do. You're going to play with all of these tools, and if you have any questions, post in the discussion area. All right, perfect. So we move that aside. So let me next show you how the pen tool works. Very powerful tool. So on the toolbar, notice there's a pen tool. You can use a shortcut called P. So simply select the pen tool, and here I'm going to click once, and then click again, and then keep clicking to draw the actual shape. Okay, and then Figma is smart enough to understand that, hey, these lines join, so I'm going to continue to join these lines. And when I'm done, I can click done to have a square. If I'm not done or if I want to continue, I can simply draw and keep drawing other lines as well. So that way, I can continue to draw any kind of vector shapes as I like. So let me go ahead and complete this 3D box here. So all I'm doing is just simply clicking one endpoint and joining the other endpoints, right? So this kind of gives you the shape of whatever you want. Perfect. So this looks like a box, right? And then once I'm done, I can click on the done or before I click on done, there's a tool called paint bucket. So if I need to fill this box with certain paint, I could do so. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling the shapes here with the color. So this fill color is in gray. Of course, I can change the color. If I need to maybe use the eyedropper here and choose the button color here, which is this particular pink area, or maybe the orangish type, I could do so. I could also change the stroke. So instead of the stroke color, I can change the color of the stroke, or I can change the weight of the stroke. So from one to five, and it's going to actually change the stroke of the outline. I could also align it center inside or out. So for instance, if I say inside, it's going to change the stroke inside. So once I have this, of course, I can select any of these endpoints and change the shape, right? So I can manipulate the, the vector shape any which way. And once I'm satisfied with this actual shape, I can click done. And now I have the actual image. I can also make larger. So of course I can make the shape larger, right? And hold the shift key down. So it, if I hold the shift key down, it proportionates to my original drawing, right? Otherwise it's just going to keep the shape larger or smaller the way I want it. All right, so I'm gonna hold the shift key down. Perfect, there we go. Double click or edit the object. I can recolor the shapes individually. So if I need to have the shape change color, I could do so. I could also, for instance, move the inner sides to any shape I want and so on. So this gives you a good idea on working with these vector shapes. So I hope this helps kind of practice with these shapes. I've demonstrated the pen tool and the shapes as well. So make sure you get comfortable with the shortcuts and working with these shapes because you'll be drawing them within the app as well. So practice and let's move to the next lecture.